Hey guys, Andrew Esquivel here back with what's not going to be a review, it's going to be a demonstration. We have the Panasonic WXF991 video camera and I'm going to be testing the camera to see how well it performs in different scenarios, mainly involving light, contrast, uh, that sort of situation. So I want to get like real world candid shots to show you what this camera can actually do all in automatic mode. Now, yes, you can put this in manual mode and probably get slightly better shots, but this is a prosumer camera. We're going to be leaning more towards the consumer side aspect of this camera's capabilities. Uh, obviously, if you go with manual on everything, you take your time and get good shots most devices will yield a much better result. That's not what we're going for here. Everything is standard, automatic. Let's see how well the camera can do. The first scene we're going to be looking at is my living room here. And with the blinds being closed in the middle of the day, you'll see that we have a bunch of graininess, visual noise, gain, whatever you want to call it. This is at 4K, 30 frames per second, 72 megabit per second bitrate. Uh, this is all automatic. This is what it looks like. Now from the same position, what I've done is I've opened up the blinds to add a lot more natural sunlight into the room. It does help a little bit with the graininess, but this will give us a little bit of an idea of how the camera performs in mediocre lighting situations. I wouldn't call it poor lighting, but it would have been mediocre. And this is a little bit better. All right, so now we're outside. Tons of natural daylight, which arguably might be the best situation in terms of lighting. Walking around a little bit here, kind of see what's going on. Camera says it's panning too fast at 30 frames per second. May or may not look a little choppy. Testing the zooming functions. This is all set to optical zoom only, no digital zoom. Testing the stability of the optical image stabilization. Once again, camera's telling me I'm panning too fast. We are now going to enter a low light situation. The camera does have a built-in LED you can turn on and off, or you can turn it on to automatic if the camera detects there's not enough luminosity in the room to get a good picture. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter a completely dark room. Let me see. Oh well. We can get footage. Now we're going into a proper low light situation. Uh, dark garage, there's only one source of light being the window. And we're kinda gonna get a good look at how well the camera adapts to the situation, how grainy the footage is, things of that nature. Also see, as I'm walking around here, Let me get an idea of what goes on. Just kind of a general walk around. And 
to highlight the differences I've turned on the lights. We've got multiple bright LEDs illuminating the room now. Let's we'll see how the footage is after this, see if it's still really grainy or not. What I've noticed is this camera doesn't really do too hot in low light situations. Alright, so in this scene we have got what we would consider quote-unquote good lighting. Now in this case good lighting is provided by two very bright approximate 6,000 Kelvin LEDs diffused by two light diffusion umbrellas that are pointing light in my direction where the camera is behind the lighting. Something to talk about now is one of the kind of more odd selling points of this camera is that it has this kind of almost omnidirectional facing camera that you can swivel around and you can see I'm recording what was my lighting setup in the previous scene and myself at the same time with this auxiliary camera. It's kind of a gimmick but I can see situations where this might be useful. If you're doing a particular type of vlog where you need to be showing you know what's going on in both directions yeah I, I guess this is definitely something and you can kind of uh, tilt it. It's awkward finding the adjustment lever for it. Yeah, I'm gonna adjust it like that. And we can also kind of spin it around. Now obviously this is not anywhere near as good as the main camera and if you don't need this dual functionality, quite simply flipping the LCD screen around to record your face with the proper lens is gonna yield a better result. Now I have the LCD screen facing towards me because it can flip 180 degrees. So if you're doing a vlog situation, this could be potentially useful. Just kind of going around here. Remember everything's on automatic. So we're just kind of seeing how everything works here. Now the software does detect my face. It's got my face in a triangle or a rectangle here. And uh, it's trying to keep focus on that. So this has been a demonstration, hopefully a little more candid than some of the demo footage that Panasonic has tried to release in these beautiful, relatively optimal conditions. This is the real world. This is a camera that real people are going to use in real situations that are not perfect. So it is important to make a video like this to kind of demonstrate what you can expect when using it in the real world. Now obviously, depending on what you're planning on using it for, you're planning on using it for, sorry, you might get better quality than me. Well, you know, if you've got the professional lighting and everything, yeah, the camera's actually quite nice. For me, I often leave myself in situations where the lighting is definitely not this good because I am a bit of a night owl. There are settings like infrared and night settings, low light settings that you can use. The low light settings still don't help much at all with the graininess. I've tried them. And I'll be trying to release more footage with these specialized settings in future videos if I decide to keep the camera. I'm going to be doing a lot of experimentation with it. But that key situation of low light keeps coming back to, uh, should I be investing in a camera that doesn't do good in a situation I'm often in? We'll find out soon enough. But anywho, that, or this, has been the video that I think I would have liked to have seen at least. 
before purchasing this camera. I don't see a lot of good footage specifically saying it was made with this camera. So I hope this was helpful. You know, there's a lot of people who were looking at this device and it's two years old now. I haven't been able to find any firmware updates. I was hoping maybe there was a firmware update that I could apply and maybe get a little better functionality, a little bit better assistance from the auto settings. Panasonic's website is pretty janky, if I'm being honest here. It was very hard to find anything on there. Um, it's been two years, Panasonic. I'm on version 1.02, I believe. Well, either way. Hope it was helpful, guys.